Warning, this video features gameplay of Prison of Elders, the new endgame PvE content in House of Wolves. I'll be going over the prison itself, any mechanics, bosses, and basic strategies. If you want to go into the Prison of Elders without any prior knowledge of what to expect, please turn off this video now. Hello, and welcome to the Prison of Elders, the PvE endgame content for the House of Wolves. Prison of Elders can be accessed by going to the Reef in the Director menu. There are four difficulties available for you, level 28, 32, 34, and 35. What you'll be seeing in this video is mostly the level 34 version. Prison of Elders is for three players and has matchmaking available for the level 28 version only. This video will also be a commentary with a bunch of jumping around of the gameplay. If you'd like to see a full gameplay without any commentary, it will be live very soon. Note that you'll need to complete the story missions and strike before you can gain access to the Prison of Elders, or at the very least, I remember that being the case. The Prison of Elders consists of five rounds of a randomly selected sector of Cabal, Fallen, Hive, and I assume Vex, although of my two playthroughs, one on level 32 and one on level 34, I never saw any Vex. The five rounds applies for the level 32 and level 34 versions. There might be less in the level 28 or more in the level 35. You'll see four doors surrounding you and one will open up at random, along with the game giving you a random modifier that you will have to deal with for the entire round. There are plenty of new modifiers as well, like this one called Trickle, where the recharge rate of all of your abilities is significantly reduced, basically to the point where you will get two uses of your grenade and melee attack throughout the entire round. I have learned that the modifiers and I assume the combatant orders will change on a week to week basis as opposed to every single time you enter the arena. Some more examples of new modifiers include small arms where your primary weapon damage is doubled, exposure where guardian shields are increased but do not replenish, catapult where grenade recharge rates are greatly increased, and brawler where guardian melee damage is increased by 300%. Note that with Exposure, where Guardian Shields are increased but do not replenish, supposedly weapons like Red Death do not proc health regen, but I am unsure if any non-super subclass abilities will regenerate your health. Also note that while it says your shields won't replenish, they actually do, just at an incredibly slow rate. There may be more modifiers beyond these, but these were the ones that I got to see for myself. When you enter any arena, you'll find mines planted on the ground. When shot or otherwise triggered by proximity, they will explode, causing a giant white sphere to appear. These spheres will slow down anything within its radius, but not deal any damage. Round 1 does not toss anything too crazy in your direction. You'll experience all the various enemy types that that particular enemy race has. So for the Hive, you'll be seeing lots of Thrall, Acolytes, Ogres, Wizards, and Knights pretty much all at the same time. Each round has three waves to it, and each wave is completed when all of the enemies are dead. We'll move to round two, where things get a little more interesting. In the second and third waves of any non-boss round after the first, you will now have critical objectives to complete. These objectives are things that absolutely need to be done, otherwise you will instantly wipe and will have to start the round over. The example you're seeing now is diffusing splinter mines, which are randomly scattered throughout the room. To disarm them, simply stand under them like you're capturing a point in control. The more people underneath, the faster the disarming. These mines can stack, meaning the game is not going to wait for you to disarm the first mine before it deploys the second one. Each mine will deploy around 15 seconds after the previous. In the level 32 version, there was also the critical objective of destroying these mines instead of disarming, where you simply need to shoot the mines. They do have a fair amount of health, but nothing good focus fire can't take down quickly. These will also spawn randomly in the room every time. Even if you wipe, they will respawn in new places, so you can't memorize the pattern that they will spawn in, but you can memorize the spots they can spawn in because they only spawn in a certain number of different spots. In the level 34 version, there's also the public event style critical objective, where an enemy will spawn and attempt to run through checkpoints. If you don't kill the enemy before it reaches the final checkpoint, then it's a wipe. After the second wave of non-boss rounds after the first, Varix will send you the gift of ammo. This could be special ammo or heavy ammo. You'll only have one minute to pick it up, otherwise it'll disappear, but there aren't many reasons to let the ammo sit in the middle of the arena. 
In the level 32 version, the fourth round had a generic boss enemy to fight against. In the level 32 version, there were no other objectives, but there might be additional objectives in higher difficulties, but that is only speculation. That being said, the game is still going to throw tons of enemies at you to the point where you're going to need to worry about them at some point. These boss waves are typically a little more intense because you don't get many chances to stop moving and pick off targets from far distances or even to take a breather. It is almost non-stop until you kill the boss. You can see this boss here is just a generic knight with a hive boomer weapon, but that does not stop it from being a frantic encounter. In the level 34 version, there was no boss fight, instead just resulting in a typical round with critical objectives. However, like I said earlier, each week is randomized, so there is the possibility that maybe the time that I played just did not have a boss fight. In the level 32 version, the final boss is Valis Traug. Traug only has one mechanic, but it is something that you definitely need to be mindful of. Every time you bring down Traug's shield, after about 10 seconds, his shield will recalibrate to a different elemental weakness and will instantly regenerate. That is the only thing that you need to worry about, but you'll still have to deal with the endlessly spawning Cabal enemies, which can make this fight very hectic, to say the least. In the level 34 version, the final boss is Urox, Flame Prince. Urox, much like Traug, only has one mechanic, but it's one that you need to be mindful of. Approximately every minute, Urox will summon his rage and cause the ground to ignite for 10 seconds. Any time you're walking on any ground, you will take solar damage. The modifier for my team was, conveniently enough, Solar Burn. However, I don't know if Solar Burn will be the modifier every single time for this boss fight, or if it was just a coincidence. It seems somewhat likely to have it be Solar Burn for that mechanic. Once the final boss is dead, that is when you will get your loot. You will need to complete the entire Prison of Elders in order to get any loot. How and where you get said loot will remain a mystery until you get to experience the Prison of Elders for yourselves. And that is Prison of Elders. Let's talk a little bit about preparing, general strategies, and then we'll talk about opinions. Having a very diverse arsenal of weapons is going to be beneficial to you, given that you'll be fighting every kind of enemy type in the game. Having multiple guns of every elemental property is going to be very helpful. But most of all, I think you're going to be using shotguns more than snipers in the Prison of Elders, mainly because everything is in these small arenas. You don't typically get a lot of time to be uninterrupted, able to snipe things from a distance. You see me using Invective of all things in this gameplay, and let me tell you, if you don't have this thing upgraded, it's time to get to work, because Invective was my jam in Prison of Elders for the Cabal parts. It does some very, very good work. Found Verdict at 365 is also going to be something to consider because it is a very, very powerful shotgun. Elemental primary weapons you should consider ascending are going to be Vision of Confluence for Solar, Fatebringer, obviously, for Arc Damage, and probably Word of Crota for Void. I don't actually know if there are going to be any elemental primary weapons for House of Wolves. We did see the Prison of Elders auto rifle, and it did not have an elemental property. For a basic strategy overall, planting yourself in the middle of the map as a starting point is an absolute no-no. You're going to get surrounded really quickly, and being in the thick of it isn't exactly ideal. Instead, and I know these arenas are mainly circles, but try to hang towards one side and push your way forward or around the edges. You want to be able to create space for yourself as much as possible, or at the very least, create an area where you can fall back to without getting hounded. As for how you should spec, I was specking very defensively for my first playthroughs. Defender Saint-14, Blessing of Light, the whole nine. I imagine most Titans will be defenders as there aren't many reasons to go Striker Titan, especially with the diffusing of the Splinter Mines and who knows what else in the level 35 version. Warlocks, I imagine there's going to be many Fireborn Sun Singers for the self-res. I don't picture that PvE meta changing too much. And Hunters, you have a little bit more of an option to go Blade Dancer if you want. There's a nice variety of enemies to take out, so Arcblade is going to be able to rip through those weaker enemies, but for higher difficulties, it will probably be right back to Gunslinger for safety purposes. Now, there's some stuff that I like about Prison of Elders, and there's some stuff that I don't. I like the high intensity. The game throws a whole bunch of enemies at you and just says, deal with it, and not starting with weaker enemies and ramping up. It just dumps everything on you. It is not slow paced. You need to be constantly aware of your surroundings, especially with the critical objectives. The boss fights do this pretty well, where it's tough to just burn the boss outright while ignoring all the enemies, although I'm sure some strategies will eventually come to form where you just burn the boss. 
the whole random modifier, random enemies thing is nice to keep things a little bit fresh as well. It won't be the same thing every single week, and modifiers will adjust how you play certain encounters. It'll likely be better than Crota's End in terms of replayability. Is it going to be doing much for me when we're in August? I'm not too sure, but I do think it'll be slightly better for the long term versus stuff like raids, which never change. What I am disappointed about is the lack of depth. Those who like the raids, their complexity, their mechanics, you're really not going to see that in the level 32 and the level 34 versions of Prison of Elders. I have not played a single second of the level 35 version, so for all I know that could be the most complex stuff that we've ever seen, but I'm going to go out on a limb here and guess that it's going to be similar to the level 32 and level 34 versions, but just ramped up in intensity. There were two things that I was hoping for with Prison of Elders out of a possible three. Challenging, fun, and deep. And we got challenging and fun, so I will definitely take it. This kind of content is going to be played by more people due to the less amount of people being required. It's not as complex, but there's still some challenge and intensity there. This kind of content seems more designed with the not as hardcore audience in mind. More of a stepping stone for stuff like raids for people who haven't been able to do raids. I honestly think that some of the boss mechanics we saw in Prison of Elders would be great as strike bosses. Prison of Elders is very much an in-between of strikes and raids. It is right smack in the middle of that. But Prison of Elders isn't anything much more beyond shoot stuff and don't die, lacking that depth that the raids have. That, and I just enjoy six-player content more than three-player content, plain and simple. The more people I can have in my group, the better. I just like it more. If we could have ten-man content, I would be all for it, personally. This is sounding a lot like I hated Prison of Elders, and I didn't, because I absolutely had fun with it. I'm very much looking forward to the level 35 version as well, because that's where the real challenge is going to be located. Level 34 is fun, it's intense, but I don't consider it as being something that was incredibly difficult to do when you're at level 34, at least versus something like one of the raids. Basically, what I'm trying to get to is, yeah, it's fun. But it's not a raid, and the raids are something that have been really, really different from other FPS experiences that I've been a part of. I know prison is not something that's going to replace raids. Something like this and raids can very easily coexist. I will definitely enjoy my time with Prison of Elders, but I'm going to be waiting with supreme patience for the next raid, because that's the kind of content I personally really enjoy. I enjoy the mastery, I enjoy the depth, and Bungie, for all intents and purposes, have been able to make them work for a shooter, which is great. However, if we didn't let Bungie experiment with new game modes to see what works and what doesn't, well, that doesn't really help the game grow. Bungie is very hard at work developing the next raid for what I assume to be a Comet release. That is all I have for you guys on the Prison of Elders. Like I said, if you're looking to watch a full run without any commentary, it'll be going live very, very soon. It'll be the level 34 run that I did, plus the Fallen section from my level 32 run, since I didn't get any Fallen sections in my level 34 run. I will link it in an annotation, on the screen, and in the description. Also, if need be, I will follow this video up with any additions or corrections that I might learn from Bungie's stream of the Prison of Elders. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.